Hello and welcome to the Learning Commons on-campus co-op video. So we'll talk about your on-campus co-op experience in the Learning Commons and we'll talk about the registration expectations and other need to know information for spring of 2023. My name is Kelly Thompson and I'm the Program Director for on-campus co-ops and I work uh, in partnership with the Learning Commons staff to offer all positions in the Learning Commons as a on-campus co-op experience. So what is an on-campus co-op? So it is your pairing of your part-time work experience in the Learning Commons with an academic course, in particular Co-op 1000, to meld them together to help you articulate your role in uh, the Learning Commons uh, for future employers. And we'll dive into that in just a moment here. So the philosophy behind on-campus co-ops is that the Learning Commons positions are unlike any other on campus. It really is a leadership role to put on your resume. So congratulations on uh, gaining this great work experience. It really will um, really teach you some great beneficial things. Um, and so at UC, we really are looking for um, ways to make the student employment experience really student-centered. So we really wanted a way to blend in the academic and the professional development right into Learning Commons positions um, because you are going to be learning a lot of really great uh, employability skills or career readiness skills. Um, and so the course is meant to help you articulate that to future employers or graduate school or, or whatever your next step might be. And so Co-op 1000 is just for on-campus co-op students, in particular your section, either section one or section two, and we'll go into the differences between the, the two sections in just a moment, but these sections are just for Learning Commons uh, employees. And so the course is all about professional development and all of these um, cross-cutting or transferable um, or career readiness skills. Um, there's many different names for, for them, but basically skills that you're going to learn in your job that you can take and apply to any industry or wherever you're going next. So um, things like teamwork, um, problem solving, critical thinking, things like that. Uh, you'll go into that a little bit more in depth in the class. But the course is 100% asynchronous online. So the course will never meet in person or they will not meet online either. Um, so everything is, is pretty much self-paced um, from the student's perspective. And you can expect maybe about 30 minutes to an hour every couple of weeks, and it does span the full spring semester. And the assignments are designed to help you think and reflect on uh, those skills that you're learning that every employer wants and needs in the future. So like I mentioned, those cross-cutting skills before, teamwork, problem solving, um, innovation, things like that. Um, and it does fulfill a peer educator attribute um, for section one. Um, and then both sections have the honors experience um, attributes on the transcript. And so um, those are something that comes with course registration. So a peer educator, um, it is a attribute that automatically goes in your transcript um, so that an employer could see in the future that you had a, a peer role. Um, and then the honors experience, um, those are also coded on the transcript for students. Um, and those count towards the honors experiences that um, those students have to have in particular. If you are not in the honors program, it is not going to affect anything. Um, but if you are in the honors program, um, it is simply um, fulfilling a requirement that you have to take. Um, and so the class is really broken down into three parts. So the first part is really getting started in the on-campus co-op experience, expectation and defining your goals for the role. Um, and then you will lean into part two, which is leveraging your strengths for your organization's community and well-being. So knowing the role that you take and your strengths and your weaknesses that you bring to an organization and how that helps. And then the third part kind of transitions into thinking about that in the greater context of an organization. So thinking about how you can apply that to different places and, and uh, different roles you might have. And then also how to gain feedback um, as well. So either give and or receive feedback from your supervisor as well. Um, so the course is broken up into to three um, distinct parts um, that really kind of guides the student through the journey um, of, the, of the Learning Commons uh, on-campus co-op experience. And then thinking about how you were going to do that, just to kind of give you a glimpse into uh, what to expect, um, you'll complete some self-assessments to identify the skills um, and or um, strengths that you already have versus ones that you might need to work on. 
Um, and then you'll set some SMART goals connected to your role in your on-campus co-op position. And then you will get some documented feedback, both from your co-op supervisor um, in the Learning Commons, but then also through the course. Um, and then the modules that you'll complete in the class, they're all centered on these professional development, meant really to spark the professionalism skills, things like that, um, in order to, to give you some um, uh, fuel for when you're discussing that with your peers. And then a uh, unique experience for the Learning Commons students is a GROWL meeting or GROWL session. Um, GROWL stands for Guided Reflection on Work and Learning. Um, and that is really aimed to be in a real-time format discussion of cross-cutting skills and how it applies to your Learning Commons role. Um, and so that is a very unique uh, and actually kind of enjoyable experience for students. It really helps to kind of synthesize synthesize your role. Okay, so paying some attention more towards registration. Uh, so, <clears throat> excuse me, students are required to enroll in Co-op 1000 in Catalyst prior to June 9th, or I'm sorry, January 9th. January 9th is the first day of classes. And if you may have already been enrolled in this class if you attended in-person onboarding towards the end of fall semester. Um, if you have not attended the in-person onboarding, um, you can self-enroll per these instructions. So if you have a peer educator type of role, um, SI leader, um, things like that, uh, you'll be in section one. Uh, if you'll be working at the front desk and front desk operations, uh, you will be asked to enroll in section two. Um, and so uh, students will need to enroll for either zero or one credit. Um, and that's determined on your spring enrollment for your total credits. So let's say you have um, 15 credits in the spring, you're eligible to take it for one credit. Um, but if you're maybe already at 18 credits and you can't take any more, that's all right. Uh, you can enroll for zero credit. Um, this is an expectation for all the roles. Uh, there are recognized exemptions, um, but you cannot simply opt out because you um, feel like you, uh, you know, are not hoping to take the class. Um, this is an expectation for every role in the Learning Commons. Um, and so you will need to make uh, sure that you enroll for either zero or one credit um, if you are um, required to take the role. Okay, so other helpful information. So I wanna talk about three things on this slide in particular. So there is um, some information that we just like students to know about. You don't have to do anything with this, um, but the tuition information and the policy, we don't want students um, to not be well informed. So we'd like to inform students of the tuition policy. So when you enroll for a course, all of that is either rolled into your flat rate tuition, which is between 12 and 18 credits, or um, uh, if you're at zero credit, it doesn't incur a charge for students. Um, so either way, if you're at zero or one, you are not charged for this class. So it is simply included in your tuition. Um, and so you might see it on your bill as an itemized course, um, and it appears as though there's a charge, but really it's just the tuition being divided by the number of credit hours that you have. Um, but if you have any questions, um, I, uh, I do have the official full length policy linked in your Canvas page for Learning Commons employees, um, because of course, um, we wanna make sure the students are informed. Um, and so you can read that at length if you would like, um, but that, that uh, summary that I just gave is, um, is what, what is reflected in there. And then my role as the program director in working with uh, the, the staff in the Learning Commons is working to make sure that the students that meet exemptions, um, everybody um, that needs to take the course is enrolled and properly enrolled in the right amount of credit. So that is something that I uh, work with the Learning Commons staff um, pretty in depth. And so we take every measure to make sure and reach out to students. So um, if you have any questions or if you want to just double check your enrollment, um, please feel free to reach out to me. My information will be at the end of this slideshow. Okay. And then um, I also want to make sure that students are aware. I know that we're talking about Co-op 1000 um, as your first course experience um, paired up with your first semester in the Learning Commons. But if you stay on for a second or even third uh, semester as a Learning Commons employee, you're eligible to continue to earn class credit for your role. So um, the Co-op 2000 continuation is if you complete Co-op 1000 successfully, you can stay 
um, uh, actively enrolled in, a, in another Co-op 2000 course. Um, and unlike Co-op 1000, there is no zero credit option, however, though, for that class. So you would need to plan for a one credit at least. Um, that particular course is um, a one to 12 credit hour class. Um, so just be aware of that. And then um, if you progress onto a peer leader coordinator type of role, there is a really great class um, called Co-op 3031 um, that is actually taught by the same instructor as Co-op 1000. Um, and that is a particular class for peer leader coordinators. So all that to say is if you stay employed with the Learning Commons, you can still earn uh, co-op credit or class credit for uh, your job in the Learning Commons. So just wanted to make sure that you're aware of that. And then uh, last but not least is the employment discontinuation policy. It is also going to be repeated on the COP 1000 syllabus. Um, and then you'll also um, have the information in the uh, Canvas page for students as well. But I want to say it um, in this slideshow because if you are either terminated or resigned or for some reason um, employment is no longer happening at the Learning Commons, you can stay in COP 1000 um, if it is um, after the two week mark of the courses. So. Um, if termination or resignation happens in the first two weeks, you can drop it without penalty. But after that 10-day um, mark in the class, uh, the uh, grade changes to a W or WX. So just want to make sure that students are aware that they can actually stay in the class because um, you can complete the class based on the reason why you're either terminated or, or that you resigned. So we really want students to gain the benefits from the class. Um, without being penalized with a grade or, or a WX or a W, what have you. So um, all that to say, again, is if something happens, um, don't just drop the class. Um, reach out to myself and or um, your supervisor over in the Learning Commons, and they should um, uh, connect with me, and then we'll figure out a good way forward. Okay, so I want to introduce you to um, Annie Kelly. She is the instructor for Co-op 1000. If you attended onboarding uh, in person at the end of fall semester, she was there. Um, but if you did not get to get the chance to meet her, um, she's wonderful and she is um, uh, your go-to person for any course-related questions. So her email is up there, kelly2ac at ucmail.com uc.edu, um, and so she can be reached there if you have any questions about the course. And then, um, of course, my information here is um, kelly.thompson at uc.edu, and any questions about the program, um, any information um, regarding that, um, I'm happy to fill those questions. And so myself, Annie, uh, we work in tandem and partnership for the course. Um, and then I also work with the Learning Commons staff as well. So you might see um, our names, you know, sprinkled out a couple different places, um, but we wanted to make sure that you had our information um, if you needed it.